Hey guys, um, we're gonna continue working with expressions and we're gonna be simplifying them. Um, so a couple of properties that are gonna be useful in doing this, um, probably one of our favorite ones um, in algebra and simplifying is something called the distributive property. Um, so the distributive property is when we have a number being multiplied, or I should say a value, it could be a variable, but a value being multiplied by addition or subtraction within some parentheses. So normally order of operations we do the parentheses first, but sometimes we might not be able to simplify what's in the parentheses. So we can use the distributive property which says I can take that value out front and multiply by each piece. So a times b and then a times c and then I'm going to keep that sign in the middle there. So I can also, it also works this way if I have something behind this still is being multiplied when it's smashed together like that. So I can still do a times b and a times c, and then keep that subtraction. So here's an example of when I can't actually do x plus three, because I don't know what x is. So I can't really simplify what's in the parentheses, but I could still get rid of the parentheses by taking two times x, which is two x, and then two times three, which is six, and keep that addition sign. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and here I like to actually keep the sign with this number. So I'm going to think of it as negative 4 times negative 3, and then we remember negative times negative gives us positive 12. So it's actually going to be a plus sign in there. If you see a negative just out front of the parentheses, you can always treat that like a negative 1. So negative 1 times x is negative 1x, or negative x, you can write it either way. And then negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. Um, something really important, the distributive property is only over addition and subtraction, not with multiplication. So if I see, I don't see addition or subtraction here, I do not do a times b and a times c. That is not the same thing. Distributive property just works over addition and subtraction. Okay, um, some other properties that are useful are the associative property, which is just a grouping property, and it works with addition and multiplication. So we can group the addition, we can group A and B and add those first, or we could group B and C and add those first and then add A. So addition, it doesn't matter the order in which we do it. I can add these two and then this, or I can add these two and then the first one. It doesn't matter with addition. The same is true for multiplication. If I'm multiplying three values together, it doesn't matter if I do the first two together first or the last two together first. As long as I end up multiplying all three together, it doesn't matter which ones I group together and choose to multiply together first. Uh, the commutative property just says that the order does not matter. Um, so a plus b is the same as b plus a. 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. The same is true for multiplication. Division and subtraction do not work this way. So the commutative property and the associative property are specific to addition and multiplication. Excuse me. Okay, another big piece to simplifying is combining like terms. So like terms are things that have the exact same variable parts. So they have the same letters and the same exponent. Now they might not always have exponents or they might not always have letters. So here's some examples of that. So these are all like terms because they all have x's. These are all like terms because they all have a squared. So they all match exactly the variable part. Now these are just integers. They're just constants. And yes, they're all like terms because they match in the sense that they don't have variables. So the variable part has to match exactly or has to just not be there, like in this last example. Okay, so we're gonna use some of our vocab from last time and see if we can list the number of terms. So here, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna simplify it all here, you guys, I'm just gonna uh, look at the number of terms. So anytime there's addition and subtraction, it's gonna separate the terms. So here is addition, Here's subtraction, here's subtraction. So there are one, two, three, four terms. So you can kind of look at however many signs there are addition and subtraction, so it's one more than that. So there were one, two, three addition or subtraction signs, so there's one more term than that. Here there are one, two, three, so same thing, there's gonna be four terms. And again, if that helps to kind of separate them out, you sure can. Here, 
one, two, three. Uh, well, yeah, they all seem to have four terms. All right. Okay, so now we're going to work on actually combining those like terms. So here are some examples. Okay, so we are going to simplify each expression. So when we're simplifying, we are going to try and use our properties and combining like terms. That's kind of our goal here. Okay, so what I like to look at here first is just whatever that first term is, this has an x with it. So I want to pair it with any other x's. So I see this negative 5x or minus 5x that I could pair with it. So I could do 3x minus 5x is negative 2x. So those I can do the operation because they are like terms. And I actually kind of like to cancel my, like cross them out after I'm done with them so that I know what I've put together and which ones I still haven't. Now I have just a positive 4 and a minus 18 or a plus 8, negative 18. So 4 minus 18 is negative 14. I cannot do this subtraction because this one has an x and this one does not. Those are not like terms, so that is as far as I can simplify. Okay, number 5. Okay, a squared is my first term. I'm looking for any other a squared. So this is not a like term because it doesn't have the squared piece. So I actually don't see any other a squared, so that one is going to stay exactly the same. Okay, negative 8b. So now I'm looking for anything else with just b. So negative 8b and negative 3b, those two I could put together. So negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11b. So I took care of those. Now I have just a regular a. I don't see any other a's, so plus a, that's going to stay just like it is. Plus 10, I have no other numbers without variables, so that 10 stays exactly as it is. And then that b squared is all I have left. So there are no other like terms I could put together. Now some people ask me about the order on this. Um, typically, when we're writing this in more of a standard notational way, we like to put the exponents first, so the high exponents, so I have a squared plus b squared, and then variables without exponents, so I have an a, and then minus 11b, and then that plus 10. But those, you guys, are both correct. This is just kind of more of a notational thing that we tend to like to go um, highest exponent down to no exponents, um, and then with constants kind of at the end. If you don't put it that way, that's okay. As long as your like terms have all been combined and your signs are correct, that's all that matters. Okay, another example here. So here, I want to take care of the distributive property and get rid of my parentheses before I start combining like terms. So I'm going to take 2 times x and 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And I'm going to rewrite the rest here. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and combine like terms. So I have a regular 4 minus 10. Those are both just regular numbers. So 4 minus 10 is negative 6. And then 2x minus 3x, they both have x's, is negative 1x or negative x. All right, so now we are on to example 7. So 2 I don't see any other regular numbers, so 2 is going to stay exactly the same. c squared, ah, I have a 5 and an 8, both positive, so it's going to be plus 13c squared. Okay, now I have c cubed, so negative 2, and this is like a negative 1. So negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3 c cubed, keeping the variable part exactly the same. And then all I have left is plus 6c. And again, the order is not crucial to be changing. So that's as far as we could go. And again, just to reiterate, you guys, those exponents are different, which is why I cannot combine those c um, variables any further. Okay, here I have 1 half x plus 3 fourths x. They both have x's, so I can add them. Now you'll notice really what I'm doing is I'm just working with the coefficients. So I really need to know what is 1 half plus negative 3 fourths. So 1 half plus negative 3 fourths, I need to utilize my fraction operation rules. Common denominator, so 2 goes into 4, so I'm just going to multiply this one by 2. So I get 2 fourths 
plus negative three-fourths, which gives me negative one-fourth. Okay, so that is going to be my no coefficient on x. So when I added one-half and negative three-fourths, I got negative one-fourth, and I just tucked my x on there. So I added those two. Now I'm going to add four and negative five, which is negative one. Okay, last example here. I actually have um, some order of operations stuff I can use in this one as well. I have some absolute value grouping symbols, which I want to do first. So that's going to be just seven. I'm going to rewrite everything else exactly the same. Okay, now after any grouping symbols, we want to do exponents or roots. And these exponents I can't really simplify because I don't know what x is, but this is a root I can simplify. Square root of 36 is 6. Okay, so we've kind of simplified some expressions that we could do with our order of operations. Now we're going to be combining like terms. So 6 and 7 are just regular numbers. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. Um, x and negative 4x, so this is 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3. And negative 3x cubed, and again, this is like a 1x cubed, so negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2x cubed. Okay, um, hopefully those examples were helpful, you guys, on simplifying expressions. Thanks for watching.